Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 5 Games 5 Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk Playing Crazy Rider is obviously something of an acquired skill. I've been trying for years now and it's one I haven't mastered. The game was released by Superior Acon Soft and it's a racing game in the style of Overdrive. Naturally, the aim of the game is to win the race, or at least finish in the first 6 riders. However, to put the crazy into Crazy Rider, you can also knock other participants off their bikes for bonus points. I can think of few more depressing ways to start a racing game than by being overtaken by 59 other riders within the first few seconds. This seems to happen every single time you start the race. You then have to speed up on the straights and slow down for the curves to make progress, fighting your way back to the front. Alas, there are many other bikers in the competition and as soon as you collide with a single one of them, you stall, usually to be overtaken by every single bike you've previously taken over. This makes Crazy Rider really infuriating. It has six tracks in total. In 20 years, I've never qualified from the first one. Triple Decker 6 contains Cavern Capers, Snapdragon and Castles of Sand, which are all games originally by the Electron user magazine. Cavern Capers is the best of the bunch, and is a scrolling caverns game in which you avoid bouncing blobs by thrusting at the right moment. At the same time, you shoot the oil cans and try and achieve a high score before the inevitable happens and you crash. Snapdragon is a game of snap for two players in which each player hits a key when they see a matching pair of cards. Once one player beats the other, a rather pitiful dragon is displayed. Finally, Castles of Sand. It's an original idea in which you're meant to collect enough sand to build a castle before the tide comes in. A very poor looking game, however, that is slow and with a difficulty level compounded by fiddly controls. Good luck at persevering with this. The Triple Decker series are known for many things, and quality is not one of them. It's best to bear that in mind, then you're not really disappointed. Amnesia is a rescue development project. Not a full game as such, but a prototype for a sideways scrolling platform game by Kevin Edwards. Not a lot of information exists about it, other than it was abandoned in 1987, with only a small part of the first level completed. Obviously it can't be measured against the standards of a finished product in these circumstances, so let's just talk about it instead. Firstly, it's got very nice software scrolling for an Electron game. Secondly, it has a curious firing style which alternates between a bullet going forwards and diagonally. Thirdly, you journey from left to right, shooting the obstacles and shooting or avoiding the bouncing balls and the flying aliens in your path. The prototype is fixed so you can't be killed and the game hangs once you've played past a certain location. I don't imagine it's of interest to many people, but nonetheless it's interesting to see a game for the Electron which never made it. Gala Force is one of the seminal Acon Electron shoot 'em up games. You have control of a small UCF pilot ship, and in a quest without end, you venture forth to blast as many aliens as you can out of the sky. The game is set on a backdrop of twinkling and scrolling stars, and the aliens spin, roll, and twist in elaborate patterns. This makes for a lot of variety in the gameplay, as the player constantly has to adapt his strategy to deal with them. You can move left and right, and, although I suspect some people don't know it, also up and down. You should try and position your ship so that you're hitting the aliens the optimal number of times. If you do this right, you can pick off quite a few of them before they even have time to move into formation. The responsiveness of the ship and the speed of the game, not to mention sound and graphics, are incredible. Even though the formations do repeat after a while, it's one of the best the Electron has to offer. The computerised horse race was a staple of the 8-bit home computer, but unlike fruit machine simulators, few software houses dared to try to market a commercial variant of it. Horse Race is the only Dynabyte software title that was never sold standalone. It was supplied only on their compilation, Supercellers, the Dynabyte collection. That's probably because they knew it wouldn't exactly fly off the shelves. But the good news is that of all the lousy horse race simulators that exist for the Electron, Dynabytes is the best. You get a thousand pounds of fake money and a horse race featuring six horses on which you can lose all of it. The game scores for no other reason than because of its high resolution animation of the horse race. 
All other Electron versions just have 8x8 basic characters. So if you really must play this sort of game, then at least Dynabite's version looks nice.